For many, seasonal colds and flus are seen as an inevitable and unavoidable part of the job that are, at best, an annoyance that many suffer through and, at worst, can lead to severe health complications. However, through proper ventilation of our occupied indoor spaces, we can reduce the chance of catching colds and flus. With the ongoing prevalence of COVID-19, it is more important than ever to reduce the spreading through properly managing ventilation. Even prior to the pandemic, studies have shown that lower CO2 levels are associated with reduced student absences. This is an opportunity to adopt good ventilation practices that will improve long-term learning outcomes and well-being. COVID-19 and other respiratory viruses can spread by three main routes, through contact, through expelled droplets at short range, and through very small airborne particles. While the first two routes can be mitigated through familiar practices of hand washing, social distancing and masks, airborne transmission can be reduced by ventilation. While we intuitively know that coughing and sneezing can produce small droplets, we also know that even just breathing produces a large number of microscopic invisible particles. These small particles become suspended in the air and will follow the air currents in the room and can be breathed in by somebody else to potentially cause transmission. Without adequate ventilation, the number of these airborne particles in the room will build up, making virus transmission more likely if an infectious person is present. Similarly, without adequate ventilation, the CO2 we exhale will build up, and we can see this using the CO2 monitor. High CO2 levels mean that the ventilation is poor, and the level of rebreathed air, that is the air that has already been exhaled by somebody else, is higher. If someone is infected, then high CO2 levels can indicate increased infection risk. We can keep CO2 levels low by opening windows to provide good ventilation and to remove the stale, rebreathed air and replace it with fresh air. The CO2 monitor can help with this as an indicator of when ventilation should be increased. The difference between CO2 levels and infection risk can be confusing, so we should clearly confront some possible misconceptions. First, CO2 does not cause COVID-19. It is the small virus-laden particles that cause airborne transmission of COVID. These particles are more numerous in regions of high CO2 if an infectious person is present. Next, CO2 itself is not hazardous to our health at concentrations readily attained in classrooms. For example, the UK Health and Safety Executive set a workplace exposure limit of 5,000 ppm for a full eight-hour day. So as long as you don't exceed that, then your health is not inherently at risk. Also, CO2, or carbon dioxide, is not the same as CO, or carbon monoxide. Unlike CO2, carbon monoxide is a dangerous gas. Finally, ventilation does not eliminate COVID-19, but it does reduce the risk of transmission. Ensuring good ventilation is not all about COVID, although that is one very important consideration. There are many additional benefits of good ventilation that we will talk about in the next video.